In this video, we are going to do a NBC nuclear biological chemical or a CBRM chemical biological radiological nuclear task. And that is preventative maintenance checks and services on the M40 series protective masks. These checks do translate over to the M42. There is a few differences between the M40 and the M42. Um, on the older M42s, they had a hose that was permanently attached to the uh, face piece. Uh, those were kind of phased out to the same type of face piece like you see on an M40 and we used a uh, screw on hose when it was needed. Also on the M42, you have a small connector on the bottom of the front voice emitter. That connector is for hooking in a cable from a CVC helmet, a combat vehicle crewman's helmet, so that you can use the microphone that's inside the M42 face mask. Uh, with the uh, intercom system and radio system on the vehicle. This does not have any of those features. There is no connector here for the intercom cable, there is no hose on this. This is an M40. This is in particular an M40A1. You can tell the difference on that by the thickness of the uh, eye lenses. Now for this, we are going to be using technical manual 3-4240-3. 339-10 Operator's Manual for the Chemical Biological Mask Field M40 and also M40A1. This particular one is from 1994. Now the PMCS steps inside this manual are in Chapter 2 and they start on page 2-13. I will go through and explain it as I'm going along. I'll have the manual off here on the side and I will be reading through on the steps and then performing that step on the mask. Now with uh, PMCS I will uh, show you some stuff here if I can get to the right. You have your interval you have a B, which is the first column, which is before mission, A, which is after mission, and W, which is weekly during combat. You also have like monthly and yearly checks on equipment also. In here you have the item number of the check. This gives you what is being checked, and over here is what is, if something's wrong with something inside the check. This tells you over here is this piece of equipment still usable or does it require repairs or replacement. Now the first step is canister. Check the canister against replacement criteria in paragraph 2-6. Now this particular canister we have here is a newer C2A1. This one has a plastic covering on it where the older ones were metal. Check canister especially around seams for cracks, dents or holes. Check air intake to make sure it is not clogged with dirt. Check for damaged threads on the canister. Shake the canister and listen for signs of loose absorbent particles. This mask is non-mission capable if the canister is cracked or dented on a seam or has holes or the air intake is clogged with dirt, if the threads are damaged, or if you have loose particles or dust falling out when the canister is shaken. So we're going through, we're checking the outside of the canister, we're checking for damage. This is brand new, fresh from the container. So this one's I know is still a good canister, it has not been used yet. 
but you go through, you check the seams, you check the sides, you check the threads up here, make sure there's no damage, go all the way around. Well, how do you know when you've gone all the way around? You have a lot number and some other writing on here. Do that as your start point, go all the way around. Checking stuff over until you get back to the writing. Look on the front, make sure there's no damage up in here. This is the air intake right here. This cannot be full of mud. Now to check for loose material inside here, you hold it up next to your ear and you just shake it back and forth. Now for checking to see if there's any material that is loose inside and it's leaking out, you just take it, as we were taught, turn it so that the threaded side is facing down, shake it onto your hand and then check the palm of your hand, see if there's any uh, chunks or dust laying on it. If there is, then this is considered non-mission capable for combat operations, but it's okay for training. As I said, this canister is brand new, so this one is a go. It does pass. Item number two, eye lenses, eye rings, and outserts. Remove the outserts from the face piece. Check the eye lenses for cracks, cuts, scratches, or discoloration that affects vision. Check the eye rings for distortion or corrosion. Check both sets of outsert lenses for cracks, chips, or discoloration that affects your vision. Check rubber rings for tears, looseness, brittle spots, soft or sticky spots, or cracked rims. It is non-mission capable if the eye lenses which are on the mask are cracked, cut, scratched, or discolored enough to affect vision. If they are cracked at all, it's non-mission capable. If the eye rings are bent or corroded, if the outserts are broken or distorted beyond enough to affect vision, if the rubber rings on the outserts are torn, cracked, loose, or sticky, meaning they're starting to fall apart. Now, on our face piece here, these on the outside, if you remember, are the outserts. So just take them. It's kind of hard to do this with rubber gloves. I'm used to doing this without any gloves on. Roll it a little bit. Take it off. Same on this side. Take it off. So the first thing we're going to check is the eye lenses, which is these pieces on the mask here. You're checking for cracks, which there are none that I can see. Any major distortion, discoloration, scratches. You might have a few scratches. You know, as long as they don't affect your vision, you're okay. You're checking the eye rings around the outside for corrosion, being bent. And you're also checking these little hooks that hold it on to the face piece. If any of these are bent out a little bit, I was told you can bend them back and that's okay. As long as you don't have multiples in a row that are bent out, that would break the seal to the inside. If it's just one, you're okay, you can bend it back. You know, don't go beyond what these are pre-crimped at by the factory, but just crimp it back, bend it back, and you're good to go. So we're going through, checking this. This one's okay. Checking this side. It's okay, no cracks. Um, like I said, for telling on the thickness, if you look at the side of these lenses, you'll see that they're thicker. You got a little separation here. That's a way to tell between the M40s and the M40A1s. These are clearly thicker. And then we check our outserts. We're checking the metal around it for corrosion, damage, pulled away. We're checking the rubber. 
Make sure there's no cracks, gumminess, sticky spots. Not torn up inside. Remember, these are on the outside of the mask, so if there's just, you know, a little crack on it, I wouldn't worry as much. But if you get, you know, a whole split on this, then you want to replace those. If these are damaged on here, the mask itself is non-mission capable, meaning you have to replace it. If there's something wrong with the outserts, you replace the outsert with a different set. Just go through, feel with your fingers inside and out, feeling for the sticky spots and that stuff. Nothing, this is good to go, so we set those to the side. Next, item three, the hood. Remove the hood from the face piece, which I already did. Now, when you're checking the face piece, make sure you do not expose it to a heat source, especially flames or to close to light bulbs where it could affect the uh, hood and start melting it. Examine the hood for the following defect, defects. Cuts, holes, or tears. Needle holes, needle holes at the seams is acceptable. Check for sticky or gummy areas, peeled or worn coating. Check the straps, cord, hardware for missing, frays, or torn. Check the zipper if it's broken or inoperative. Loose stitching on hood or and pile and the uh, pleh. Check stitching on hook and pile fasteners or dirt in the hook and pile fasteners. Now, if this is a, the hood is non-mission capable, if it has more than two pin size holes in any one panel, if the hood has crack, cuts, holes, or tears, if the fabric is sticky or gummy, if the fabric is peeling or worn, if straps, cord, or hardware are missing, frayed, or torn, if the zipper is torn, broken, or inoperative, or the hook and pile fastener, aka Velcro, are not secure to the hood or clogged with dirt. Now, this particular hood I have here is a quick doff hood. The steps I told you is for the older style hood that had the zipper on the front. So if you have the older style hood, you know, that's the step for it, but there is a step farther or later on for the quick doff hood, so we will check it then. Item number four, the face piece assembly. Visually inspect inside surfaces of the face piece for dirt, mud, and greasy or oily substances. Check the face piece for holes, tears, or splits. By holding in front of a light source, look closely at the edges of the face piece. Check for soft or sticky spots. Check silicone rubber next to eye lenses to be sure the eye lenses will not pull away from the face piece. Also check all face piece housings to be sure silicone is not pulling away. Now it is non-mission capable if the face piece is dirty. So then just clean it and you're good to go. If the silicone rubber has holes, tears, nicks, or splits, or soft or sticky spots, which allow air to enter the face piece, then the mask is non-mission capable. You have to replace it. If the eye lenses or housings pull away from the face piece, the face piece is compromised, replace the mask. Now, in order to check the face piece on this, I'm gonna have to take the second skin off. I don't remember if this version of the manual has the steps for checking the second skin. I know in the newer versions of the manual that came out in the late 90s, it did when we changed over to the quick doff hoods. The old hoods that uh, were with the M40s, 
it had a face piece on it, but when we changed over to the quick doffs, we had to use the second skin, which is a protective rubber layer for on the outside of the mask. So we're going through and we're checking the face piece. Like it said, we're checking for cracks, splits, cuts. Looking it over, make sure there's no sticky spots or anything. If it's sticky, it means the material is breaking down. Make sure to check inside for splits. Check to make sure the eye lenses are not pulling away, there's no cuts, breaks, cracks. Check it on both sides, just give it a little pull, you don't need to yank on it. Check around your voice emitter and that stuff, check down here. On your outtake. Next, step number five, head harness. Put on face piece and check head harness for loose uh, or loss of elasticity. Check for dirt, check the straps for cuts, tears, missing parts or deterioration such as mildewing or fraying. So we're looking at the head harness itself, which is this piece. Since I did cleaning on it, I looked it over then. It's not dirty, it's not muddy, there's no mildew in that stuff. For checking elasticity, just give it a little pull. Make sure that it pulls back. If you pull on it and it pulls apart, doesn't pull itself back, yeah, get a different head harness. Now, it's non-mission capable if the head harness will not hold the face piece firmly to your face. Or if the head harness is cut, torn, frayed, has missing parts, or has deteriorated. Step number six. We are checking the buckles. Look at the buckles for bends, cracks, or corrosion. Pull on the head harness straps and make sure the buckles hold straps tightly. Check for missing or broken buckles. Make sure the finish on the buckles is not chipped or scratched, exposing bare metal. The mask is non-mission capable if the buckles are bent, cracked, corroded, or will not hold the straps. If the buckles are missing or broken, or if bare metal is exposed. So we're looking this part in here, the actual buckle on these straps itself. So pull on it a little bit, pull to make sure that it holds the strap in place, look it over, make sure it's not all corroded. Check each one. This one has a little bit of corrosion, but it's not enough to cause a major issue on it. You can take a brush to this and brush that off. Okay, the buckles are all good to go. Outlet valve disc and outlet valve cover. Warning, do not use face piece if outlet valve disc or outlet valve are missing or damaged because the face piece will leak. That's kind of a given. Grasp the tab at the bottom of the outlet valve cover and lift the bottom portion of the outlet valve cover. Check to see if the outlet valve disc is present and is not curled or distorted. Rotate the, valve, the outlet valve disc to make sure it is not sticking. Look at the outlet valve disc for nicks, tears, or rips. Wipe off any moisture from outlet valve disc with clean cheesecloth. 
smooth outlet valve disc so it lies flat on outlet valve seat. Check outlet valve seat for dirt. Check outlet valve cover for cuts, tears, or holes. Look at inside of outlet valve cover for dirt or moisture. Wipe off any dirt or moisture with soft, dry, clean cheesecloth. Now, it is not operational if the outlet valve disc is nicked, torn, or ripped, cannot be cleaned, or will not seat properly. Outlet valve seat is dirty, or if the outlet valve cover is cut, torn, or has holes, or will not seat firmly over the outlet valve. This is your outlet valve. I already removed the outlet valve cover. So we're looking at the disc, which is this piece in here. You can go through and rotate it with your finger. That'll let you know if it's moving freely and stuff. You want to make sure that it's not stuck. You want to look at the inside. You can see the little spokes in there. Make sure none of them are cracked, broken off. You also want to check to make sure that these little nubs are on here, not cracked off, that hold on the cover. Check the outlet valve cover. Make sure that it's not damaged, cut, torn, or anything. There's little uh, protrusions on this. I was told it's okay if it's missing one or two if they're separated and that stuff, but two close together right next to each other that are missing, then this piece is supposed to be non-mission capable and you get a replacement. You can find replacement valve disc covers or and outlet valve discs online. They're not always the easiest to find, but you can usually find some on eBay. Step number eight, the internal and external drink tubes. Check that the internal drink tube and external drink tubes are present. Look for cracks or cuts in internal, external drink tubes. Check internal drink tube for proper alignment. Check external drink tube for solid connections, meaning you're going to check it onto the canteen. Check that the internal or external drink tube is not clogged by connecting an M1 canteen cap and blowing air through the system. Check that the drinking system does not leak. It is non-mission capable if internal or external drink tube is missing or is cracked or cut. The internal drink tube is misaligned. Well, realign it and then it's mission capable. If the connections are loose, meaning that you can pull them apart, then the mask is non-mission capable. Internal or external drink tube is clogged. Unclog it by cleaning it. Or if the drinking system leaks. If the drinking system leaks, you have the possibility of contamination getting into the uh, water as you're uh, drinking it in a chemical environment. So this is the external drink tube. Give it a little tug, but don't pull real hard because you could potentially yank it off. Check to make sure that it's seated good onto here. This does not come off if you ever pull it off. The mask is non-mission capable. This is glued on. Check that the end here is seated pretty good, not damaged. There's no cracks in the hose that I can see. Check your internal drink tube, which is this piece, make sure that you would be able to grab it with your lips to be able to get a drink. Make sure it's not broken off on the inside. Uh, the NBC caps, I do not have one sitting here that I can show you quick. Or do I? No, I don't. I got them located somewhere else in the building. But uh, this just hooks into the NBC cap. You blow air into it and then it'll shoot the air and some water back into your mouth when you're drinking just to get it started and you're trying to clear the system also. Okay. Step number nine, airflow deflector. Check that airflow deflector is securely mounted inside the face piece and that both flanges 
on the airflow deflector are in the mounting holes of the face piece and are not broken. Check the mounting holes for cuts or tears. And that's essentially it because there's a picture with it. Now it is non-mission capable if the airflow deflector is not mounted properly in the face piece. Flanges are broken or will not mount in the face piece. Then the mask itself is completely non-mission capable. If the mounting holes in the face piece are cut or torn. This is your airflow deflector over here. This piece here, little flanges, and the holes are down on here, if you can see. There's one on each side, so we're checking it, make sure that this isn't damaged, and that's properly seated. And I know it's seated because I put it in, so it's good to go. Inlet valve. Check that the inlet valve disc and valve body are present and properly mounted on the post of the airflow deflector. Blow on the inlet valve disc to make sure it is not stuck to the valve body. Check inlet valve disc for cuts, holes, or tears. Check for dirty inlet valve disc. It, the mask is non-mission capable if the inlet valve disc or valve body are missing or not mounted properly on the post of the airflow deflector. So you can correct that deficiency by getting those pieces mounted on there and getting them in the correct position. If the inlet valve disc is stuck to the valve body, you're not going to be able to breathe then, so the mask would be non-mission capable until you get it unstuck or replace the valve disc because it could be damaged at that point as you're re replacing it or moving it. If the inlet valve disc is cut or torn, replace the disc, then the mask is serviceable. Or if the inlet valve disc is dirty, well, clean it. So this is the inlet valve here. That's the post from the airflow deflector and inside there is a thin membrane that is the inlet valve disc. Now there's no brakes on the spokes which means this, this is good. It's seated in here properly. It's connected to the airflow deflector and then you just blow on this to make sure that air will flow through. Hopefully you could see that. Now, step number 11, nose cup assembly. Check that the nose cup and nose cup valve seats are free of dirt. Check nose cup for cracks, cuts, or holes. Check that the nose cup is not pulled away from the back of the front voice emitter housing. Gently try to pull the nose cup away from the front voice emitter housing to make sure that nose cup is held securely. Check that the nose cup valve discs are present. Rotate nose cup valve discs to be sure they are not stuck. Check that the nose cup valve discs are not curled or torn. Check that nose cup valve discs are seated on the inside of the nose cup. Yes, I have had people that put them in the wrong position when I've gotten masks. The previous person did not put it together correctly. It is non-mission capable if the nose cup is dirty, cracked, cut, or has holes in it. The nose cup valve seats are dirty. The nose cup is pulled away from the front voice emitter housing. The nose cup valve discs are missing, curled, torn, or stuck to the nose cup valve seat. The nose cup valve discs are seated on the outside of the nose cup. Nose cup. This whole thing right here. That whole piece. Nose cup valve discs are these things in on the side. So you check those, just rotate them, make sure that they rotate, that they're not all messed up. I have had some in the past that had small holes in them, and I was told that's okay because it's on the inside of the mask. Try to pull, gently try pulling the nose cup away from your front voice emitter housing. That thing right in there this piece 
If it pulls away, the mask is non-mission capable. Now down here, just make sure it's seated properly down in here. You can feed this around the outlet valve housing by using your finger, just run it around it to get it seated. And it's real hard to get the stuff in the light. That's the outlet valve housing down there. So. Item 12, the voice emitters. These things. Check retaining rings on the front voice emitter and side voice emitter for corrosion cracks or nicks. Try to tighten retaining rings by hand to check for looseness. Check front voice emitter and side voice emitter for dents, cracks, or punctures. Make sure the four beads are in the center of each voice emitter are facing outward. The mask is non-mission capable if the retaining rings are corroded, cracked, nicked, or loose. The front voice emitter or side voice emitter is dented, cracked, punctured, or installed backwards. Well, if the one on the front, your front voice emitter is installed backwards, your mask is definitely non-mission capable. If this side voice emitter is installed backwards, you just take off the uh, housing here, the ring, flip it around, put it so that the beads are facing the outside and it's in place. That's nice and tight, it's in position. And I know the gasket is in good shape. I checked it when I washed it. Everything's good on here. There's no corrosion, no dents. We already know there's no major damage on the face piece around it. So that's good to go. Uh, to tighten this, you use, for those of you that forgot, your D-ring on the end of your long thick strap. Just line it up inside the little notches on here. Righty tighty lefty loosey, okay? Or if you're from Kentucky, lefty, righty, righty, lefty. That's an inside joke. We had a guy from Kentucky who used to respond that way when you were asked which way tightened, which way loosened. He said, well, lefty, righty, righty, lefty. Item number 13 is the carrier, the bag. So we're going to set this to the side. No, I have not cleaned the bag in a while. Empty the carrier and check for dirt, sharp edges, torn straps, or missing hardware. Make sure there are no pencil or pen markings on the carrier. Uh, the note on that, I will mention, the reason you're checking to make sure there's no markings is the ink sometimes can allow chemicals to permeate through the material. So the carrier itself, in theory, is supposed to be protected from chemical agents to an extent and if there's unapproved markings on it this is printed on here this is okay but regular ink can sometimes allow stuff to uh, permeate through with the exception of the changing of size or model number to reflect true description of the mask inside no other markings are authorized Check for mildew, solvents, or abrasive materials which may harm the face piece. Check the seams for broken stitches. Check hook and pile fasteners for dirt. If dirty, clean with a soft bristle brush. Make sure the Velcro fasteners are secure on the flap. And that's essentially it. It is non-mission capable if the carrier is dirty. Well, wash the damn thing. If the straps or torn or hardware is missing, I will say this, if the straps are missing and you cannot properly use that carrier. So if you're missing one of the straps up here, there's two straps or two, two hooks. These are for hooking onto a pistol belt. If this is like this one is missing, so be it. You still have this long strap which goes around your waist. 
You also have a strap which I have in here which goes around your leg. So you're going through, you're checking the whole thing, you're checking the Velcro, make sure this isn't dirty, it's messed up, it's tearing off. There's no major damage to the carrier. This is the new style carrier, so it does not have the hole in the bottom for the uh, elbow for on the hose for the M42. This is the leg strap. Uh, for those of you that are wondering what this is for, this is for the old style decontamination uh, sets, the decon kits for your skin. They used to come in a little plastic container, which I don't have sitting here. It fits inside here and then gets closed over the top. Once we switched over to the M291 kits, well then we used to just take this and shove it in here and that was that. And then we would put the new decon kits inside the carrier, which is where I have mine. Which I think I have some in here. I better. Okay, that's my replacement outserts. That's my M8 paper. Oh, here's my 291 kits. I got them inside here with the waterproof bags. See? And then shoved away in the back, I have M295 kits, which is for equipment like your weapon. So, this is a newer carrier, so I know it's in good shape. I just haven't cleaned it in a while. Waterproof bags. Check waterproof bag for breaks, tears, holes, or brittleness. Check that the rubber bands are not sticky, broken, or brittle. If the waterproof bag is torn, has holes, or is brittle, it's non-mission capable. If the rubber bands are sticky, broken, or brittle, it's non-mission capable. The waterproof bags. Now, the reason for these is for if you're crossing a body of water like a stream or a river, a lake, or you're doing a, an uh, amphibious landing on a beach, that would be when you would use one of these. You do not keep your mask inside one of these bags at all times because it will interfere with you being able to don your mask quickly. You're supposed to don your mask within nine seconds. Well, if you got to take it out of one of these bags, you're not going to make it. So... You can find uh, new bags online for sale. It says on here it's bag waterproof chemical biological mask. And the instructions are on, printed on the bag telling how to use it. If it's brand new, still inside the bag, we always said it's good to go. Don't worry about checking it. But if it looks like it's really messed up, then I would replace it. Now, for those of you that have optical inserts, meaning the eye lenses, your eyeglasses that go inside the mask, you check those on item 15. Inspect the optical inserts for broken lenses, frames, or disconnected from the face piece. It's non-mission capable if the lens or the frame is broken or the insert is disconnected from the face piece. Well, if it's disconnected, you just put it in and that takes care of it. But if it's broken, well, you can't use it. Now, the, now we're up to the quick doff hood. Step number 16. Remove the quick doff hood from the face piece. Examine quick doff hood for cuts. Reinstall the hood on the face piece. Check whether elastic opening can be attached to the face piece securely check that elastic loops are not broken is there any more no non-mission capable if the hood has cuts more than two pinhole sized holes or tears <clears throat> if the hood cannot be securely attached to the face piece or the elastic loops are broken this is the quick doff hood. This is the front of the hood here. There's no zipper on here. This was designed, as it says, for the M40A1s. But I can tell you we did get these 
and had them on the M40s long before the M40A1s came out. So what you do for checking for holes, you actually look from the inside and you look around holding it in front of a light or looking at a light and you look for little pin, pin holes and stuff. This is a brand new one. I pulled it out of the bag when I did this video previously a few weeks ago so I know it's in good shape. You check the uh, straps, check the buckles. Make sure they're not damaged. This says light side, that just means it's the outside as you're wearing it. So, and then check your other straps on back. Now, I have had it where some, some of the hoods, one of these straps was pulled off. As long as you have one on here, and you can use it to cross your body and hook into the opposite buckle. So this one is supposed to go to here underneath your arm. But if you're missing one, if you can cross it in front of your body and hook it in to the opposite, then you can still keep using it. It's Once they went to the JS list suits, the J lists, they removed the hoods because you have a hood on the J-list, but even when I had the J-list, I always preferred having the hood just for that extra protection. Now the elastic ring, what they're talking about on that is this right here that goes around your face piece. You just check it, see it's still good to go. Step number 17, the second skin. This thing. Remove the second skin from the face piece. Check second skin for cuts, holes, or tears. Visually inspect inside and outside surfaces of second skin for dirt, mud, and grease or oily substances. Check the second skin for holes, tears, and splits. Look closely at the edges of the second skin. Check for soft or sticky spots. Check the rest of second skin for stiff areas which crumble when rubbed between fingers or and cracks which expand when rubber is stretched. It is non-mission capable if the second skin has cuts, holes, or tears. If the second skin is dirty, well, clean it, and that takes care of that problem. If the second skin has holes, tears, or splits larger than a quarter of an inch in diameter or length, if the second skin has softer sticky spots which allow air to enter the second skin. So we're checking it over. Make sure there's no cuts, holes, damage anywhere on here. You go through and you feel it for sticky spots. Feel it all over. Just run your fingers over every little bit on here. Now if it's sticky and that stuff the reason for it is the materials breaking down this has a little indentation on here this is from the drink tube it's okay that's just going to happen over time so as long as it doesn't tear really far greater than a quarter of an inch sometimes you can find these online if this is ever damaged just get a different one what this does is it protects the face piece on the mask. It protects the mask itself. So if something were to, if you're walk, uh, walking through the woods, you hit a branch or something, it'll glance on this, maybe uh, gouge this a little bit, and it in theory should not damage the face piece on the mask. So that's why you have one of these. And that is the last step for PMCS on an M40 protective mask. And this video is almost 45 minutes long. Trust me, when you do this without demonstrating it, PMCSing the mask goes a hell of a lot quicker. So, now, I'm going to talk about, at the end here, the canisters. This is a C2A1 filter. They come in a container like this. You also have some that are in a metal uh, coffee can type thing. The metal coffee can ones, uh, 
They're considered too old for use nowadays. You want ones that are inside the plastic container like this. It'll say on it canister C2A1 one each. There is a lot number down here at the bottom. This lot number is important. The reason I mention that, there was a couple production runs of C2A1s after 9-11 that failed inspection. The reason they failed is they were not manufactured correctly. I've heard some of them were kicked back because the activated charcoal in them was not of the proper quality and it did not properly protect against certain types of chemical agents. They did not say which ones. So you can do a lookup online for C21 canister list, lot numbers, uh, defective canisters for C2A1 canisters. And it'll pull up a list of lot numbers. The last time I looked, I think it was like 20 some lot numbers. There's multiple lists out there. When you're buying or looking at a, seat, uh, a brand new replacement canister that's still inside the container, check the lot number against the, one of those lists. Make sure it's not listed. If it is not listed on one of the defective lists, it's good to go. When I bought my extra canisters, I made sure to check them. Now, they would not be acceptable for wartime use in a chemical environment, but in theory, if it is on that list, you might still be able to use that canister for biological agents. In theory, I can't say for certain. But for in a chemical environment, it would not be acceptable. It will not protect you. So... The uh, instructions for how to open this are actually on the top here. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to open one of these to show you, but you got the outer lid here, which you snap off. Then there's a little foil covering, if you can see here, that you peel off. You'll have a, a piece of uh, material over the top of the canister to protect it. Just take that off, take the canister out. Just give it a good check that it's good. Like I said, this is the new one. They have a uh, plastic casing on them where the old ones had metal. And there you go. So, Hopefully that helps you out. I will not be redoing the uh, cleaning the M40 mask video. Uh, the one I did is good enough. There was one person saying they didn't uh, like it because it was too dark. But other people have said they were able to get the gist of it. They were able to see enough that they actually used that video to clean masks that they had, that they had purchased, that when they got them were very sandy, very dirty from when whoever someone sold it. So I might do a video on donning of the M40 protective mask. I'm not sure when I'm going to get to that, but it's on the list. But with the way things are right now, everything's really fluid with the current uh, situation in this country. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to that video, but it's on my list of things to do in the future. Now for all my engineer brothers and the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember, essay